The Lancia and the Maseratis are lined up in front of their pits. The Lancia is back in third position. Trentignon's in the race again, but exactly one lap behind his previous position. A country road in Belgium, winding peacefully through the hills of the Ardennes Forest. But from time to time, his peaceful life is ripped apart, and the road is now being got ready for different and exciting things. Yes, we are on the Francochamps National Circuit, near the town of Spa. Nine miles of ordinary country roads form a triangle that is one of the finest and fastest motor racing circuits in Europe. At the apex of the triangle, the hairpin of La Source and the start of the circuit. To the right, the curve at Bernanville, then Malmody Corner and the fast Master Strait. At the foot, Stavolo Corner and finally, past La Carrière and Blanchiment, the difficult climb to La Source and back to the grandstands again. This is the view of the start from the top of the Rideon with the S-Bend of Eau Rouge. The Rideon is a steeply climbing right-hand bend, finishing in a humpback which sends cars leaping from the ground. At the top of a wooded hill, this sharp left-hander swings into the rapid drop to the footbridge at Vernonville and its fast right-hand curve. An easier stretch, and we are at Melmody. The tyre marks burnt into the road surface show the line cutting the corner, but the blind approach makes it tricker to negotiate. On the downhill master straight, speeds of over 180 miles an hour are reached, before braking for Hollowell and Stavolo corners, which are taken together as one continuous sweep. The banking at Stavolo makes it a high-speed corner. Now for the winding uphill return run, easy enough until the wooded corner at La Carrière, which the experts whip through at almost full throttle, but there is a ditch to catch a misjudged exit. After that, it's the masked corner at Blanchimont, and it's menacing post number nine. Then it's only a few hundred yards to the hairpin of La Source, where it's bottom gear and about 30 miles an hour for even the most experienced. The end of the nine mile lap covered 36 times in the race in under three hours. The third and last day for practice, the day before the Grand Prix. Fierce competition is expected, for yesterday Castellotti and Alancia broke all records by lapping at nearly 123 miles an hour, faster than the favourite Fangio in a Mercedes. Then the weather breaks, rain beats down. But the practice must go on, though now there's little chance of new records for Fangio, Moss or Farina, the chief opponents of Castellotti. Wet work for the mechanics of the three Ferraris. And there's the single Lancia, officially entered by Castellotti himself. Only one Van Wall, too, carrying all the British hopes. The three Mercedes entered for the race are odds-on favourites. Four Maseratis are entered by the works, as well as the famous blue car of Louis Rosier. The road is clear and Eugenio Castellotti starts the wheels rolling. Sterling Moss is in the Mercedes training car, carrying the letter T. <laughs> Nina Farina is away in his Ferrari. In 
this weather, nearly five minutes to do a lap. Castellotti should be round again soon. And here he is, spinning up a fountain of water behind him. It's his first appearance at Francochon, and his performance is better than anyone dreamt. Here's Moss again, and a signal from team manager Neubauer to stop next time round. Tomorrow, this nine-mile lap will be covered 36 times, a distance of about 320 miles. And now, Paul Frere, the popular Belgian journalist and driver, is ready for the getaway in his works Ferrari. A glance to check that the road is clear, and he's off. Pandemonium, a moment's flap by a wandering dog is chased off. Order restored, and the commanding figure of Neubauer signals Sterling Moss in to switch to the car he will drive in the race. There goes Rosier's Maserati, and Castellotti again. Fangio does a lap in the training Merc. Five o'clock, and the last practice is over. Uhlenhaut, Mercedes engineer and reserve driver, slows up at his pit, where Carl Kling joins him. No smiles from Monsieur Bakken and Monsieur de Arle, president and secretary of the organizing committee. If it rains at all in these parts, say the locals, it rains for a solid week. In the gloom, the cars motor back to their garages, almost unnoticed but the mechanics are going to be busy for hours ahead. And the few remaining spectators splash home, hoping, but not very hopefully, that tomorrow will be fine. And so it is. The morning of Sunday the 5th of June is bright and clear. The 13 cars are being given their last tune-up out in the sunshine. At Spa, Mike Hawthorne's van wall is breathed over by its British mechanics. The Maserati stable has entered four cars, whose drivers are Padissa, Musso, Lerez, and the great Frenchman, Jean Berra here with his compatriot, Rosier. Sterling Moss had promised his private Maserati to the Belgian, Johnny Klaas, but no amount of advice is going to get it on the road for this afternoon. In a garage at Stabolo, the new Squalo Ferraris get their final spit and polish. The team drivers are Transignan, Frere, and the veteran Nino Farina, the doctor. The obliquely set engine and outboard tanks are the distinguishing features of Castellotti's Lancia. In the Mercedes camp, the air is charged with confidence. Fangio, Moss and Kling have a superb technical service to back them, and an aristocrat of a car. Midday and three hours to go. Time now to get the 13 cars down to the circuit. and the Maseratis are lined up in front of their pits. Already the grandstands are beginning to fill. At the clubhouse of the Royal Automobile Club of Spa, there's a brisk trade in aperitifs. Monsieur de Kayser, president of the Belgian national team, arrives. Monsieur Sven, course administrator, and Monsieur Vos, president of the club. Jacques Swatters, Belgian driver, on the right there.
Mercedes engineer Ulan Hout looks confident, but then so does Paul Frere with Gilbert Thirion, also a Belgian racing driver. Trentignon, Ferrari driver, and Hugo Line, team manager, radiate optimism too. Under that check cap is Jean Barra. Mike Hawthorne chats with Louis Rosier and disturbs Nina Farina's cat nap. Fangio and Mary's fans pull out the stops to whip up support. And now it's time for the cars to be pushed out to the starting grid. Best places for the fastest cars during practice. Moss, Fangio and Castellotti share the front row. Now Sterling Moss puts on his spare goggles, watched by Madame Fangio. Castellotti is all set. On the grid, the Mercedes starters are ready. The moment is near. The drivers walk out to the grid. By tradition, the briefing is on the track itself. Rennie Backham, president of the sporting committee of the RAC of Belgium, addresses the drivers. Five minutes to go. The drivers climb into their seats. Moss's car is 14, Fangio's 10, and Castellot is 30. In the second row, Barra and Farina. Heidi Young, Fangio is in the lead in front of Castellotti and Moss in third place. And then the field. Musso in his Maserati got off to a bad start and is 13th. Vernonville, two and a half miles on. Fangio has the lead still, but Moss has taken second position from Castellotti in front of Kling, Barra and Farina. Then Hawthorne, Trentignon, Mieres, Pediza, Rosier and Mosseur. Master, always Fangio in front of Moss and Castellotti. But Farina has passed Barra. Hollowell Corner. The speed is fantastic. Fangio is first into Stavolo. Moss follows, and the rest comes scorching behind. At the beginning of the return ascent, Fangio is on his own in front. But Sterling Moss isn't far behind. La Carrière. First Fangio, second Moss. Castellotti's Lancer is third. Fourth Kling, fifth Farina, then Barra sixth. The Mercedes leader's at La Source. Fangio breaks and corners perfectly, but Moss is right there, breathing down his neck. After Castellotti, the pack, with Kling and Farina still fighting it out. First lap by Fangio in four minutes, 36 seconds, 115 miles an hour. Second time up the ride on Tangier in front of Moss. Farina has seized fourth place from King's Mercedes. Farina hammers away. At La Carriere, the Ferrari is coming up behind Castellotti. Kling, Barra and Frere are struggling for fifth position. The hairpin at La Source again. From over 100 miles an hour down to below 30 in a few yards, this corner is a classic test of driving skill.
Tavolo for the third time. Fangio, whose last lap was over 120 miles an hour, is five seconds in front of Moss. Castellotti is pressed by Farina. And the third Merck still leads the scrap for fifth place. Now Musso has passed Hawthorne's Van Wall. lap three. Still the two Mercedes with the upper hand. Then come Castellotti, Farina, Kling, Barra and Frere. A car slows down and stops at the Ferrari pit. It is Maurice Trantignon and something's wrong. Off with the cowl and check plugs while Trantignon tensely counts the seconds. The Belgian, Paul Frere, is driving magnificently. But Barra is still in front of him. Look out! And Barra's out of the race. Meanwhile, Farina slips in front of Castellotti at the hairpin. But by the right on, the Lancia is back in third position. Trantignon's in the race again but exactly one lap behind his previous position. He slows down at Eau Rouge for Frere, who has passed Kling and is now lying fifth. Signal to Castellotti that Barra is out of the race. But is he? Miraculously uninjured from his accident, he comes back to the pits on foot. He's a bit shaken, but remarkably unruffled by the crash. He's putting on his helmet again. It looks as if he's going to take over one of the other Maseratis. Yes, at the pits, the Argentinian Mirez is pulled in. Bear is going to drive number 24. And there he goes. For Mirez, the race is over. Fangio passes the wreck of Barra's car at the end of the seventh lap. His average speed so far is 119 miles an hour. Moss remains only five seconds behind him. With Barra's original car out of the running, the duel between Frere and Kling is joined by late starter Musso. At La Source, Frere, Ferrari, Kling, Mercedes, Musso, Maserati. Now, Kling puts on a spurt and passes the Belgian driver. On the eighth lap, Musso forces and overtakes both Frere and Kling. The cars are airborne at the summit of the Rydie yacht. After 80 miles of brilliant driving, Musso has overtaken eight cars. Paul Frere is back to seventh place. End of lap nine. Hawthorne's Van Wall has been losing oil and has stopped at the pits. It's a broken oil pipe and nothing can be done about it. The British team have to take the melancholy decision to abandon the race. Rosier is in 10th position and Fangio, just about to lap him, has put up the fastest lap time ever of 4 minutes 22 seconds, nearly 121 miles an hour. Forty seconds behind comes Castellotti, with Farina four seconds later. Musso and Kling, still in front of Paul Frere, are more than a minute behind the leader. A piece of fine driving, Kling passes Musso at Melmody. But on the 13th lap, the Maserati is once again the leader of this private race.
Fangio is keeping up a fantastic average speed, now over 120 miles an hour. And as always, Moss is right there behind him. Fangio accelerates again. The 15th lap is covered in 4 minutes 20 and 8 tenths seconds. With Moss now 13 seconds later, Castellotti is 50 seconds behind Fangio. But it's not Castellotti, it's Farina passing. Nino Farina is third. Castellotti must be in trouble. News comes to the pits that Castellotti has retired at Malmede with gearbox trouble. So now Kling and Musso are fighting for fourth place. Driving almost wheel to wheel and drawing a little nearer to Farina each time round. The halfway mark and a new lap record for Fangio. 4 minutes 20 and 6 10 seconds. 121.9 miles an hour. Moss gets a pit signal to maintain his speed. And here's Musso once more in front of Kling. Farina's lead on this pair is down to 3 seconds. On lap 19, Kling takes the lead again. But Musso is slowing down, and he stops at his pit. Paul Freire goes through into fifth place. Musso is still at the pits. It seems to be plug trouble. The seconds tick by, but at last he's away. One lap later, the Maserati's in again. This time it's not plugs, it's a broken rocker arm. Only five cylinders of his engine will work now, and it'll be a minute or two before he rejoins the race. There goes Barra in the sixth position. In the lead, Fangio demonstrates his mastery of the Mercedes. In spite of the increase in average speed, Moss is still close to his teammate. As they pass the pits at the end of the 22nd lap, Neubauer signals his orders to Moss. Carl Kling is still fourth, but not for long. He too has to stop at the pits. Bad luck after the performance he put up in his fight with Musso. The technicians confer without much hope. An oil union has broken and there's no chance of going on. So now we have Fangio, Moss, Farina and Paul Freire. Belgians could not have hoped for more. Paul Freire in a works Ferrari is fourth. For some, it's now time to relax and enjoy the scenery. But for the more wide awake spectators, there is still fine driving to watch. Speeds are reduced a little now, for the road is getting slippery with rubber and oil left by the cars. But there goes Fangio again, still driving a hard race. In their glass box, Commandant Lamo and his timekeepers check the passage of each car and calculate the average speeds. This race is creating a new set of records, all over 119 miles an hour. The Mercedes procession continues. Moss has come up to within seven seconds of the leader. Yellow and blue flags shown at the Ferrari pit indicate to Farina and Freire, third and fourth, that it is enough to maintain their speed without pressing. One lap behind comes Jean Berra, fifth, Musso, sixth, and Trantignon, seventh. Two laps behind the leaders come the Maseratis of Padisa, eighth, and Rosier, ninth. He 
These two cars have not been parted throughout the race. Only six laps to go. Nothing to report in the past half hour. But you wouldn't think so watching the Argentinian commentator broadcasting to Fangio's supporters in South America. He started talking nearly three hours ago, and the marathon has another half hour to run. At Master, Trantignon steals a sixth position from the five-cylindered Musso. 19 miles from the finish, Musso has to concede a second lap to Fangio. The last lap. Trantignon guns his Ferrari and avoids being overtaken by the leader for the second time. For Neubauer, the race is over and won. Over 300 miles of superlative driving behind them, the Mercedes pair press on to victory. And Monsieur Bacon's checkered flag puts a seal on Fangio's win. And there he goes on his tour d'honneur. Eight seconds later, and it's Sterling Moss in second place. And while the other cars are stopped at the pits, the two Mercedes take their bow around the circuit. The dogged effort of Nino Farina has brought Ferraris a splendid third. Paul Frere is fourth, the best Belgian performance for years. Neubauer prepares to welcome the victors. Prince Amore de Marod, president of the Royal Automobile Club of Belgium, offers the traditional bouquet to the champion. Now the Challenge Cup for Fangio, the crown of an unforgettable day and of a Belgian Grand Prix high in the tradition of the great Francorchamps circuit.